the phone and wait for the other people to see us. So that's me, that is so like so. When we stop dreaming, we stop breathing. Dreams play an important role in our lives. As many figures in the Bible are said to have been visited by God during their sleep. Then he had another dream, and he told it to his brothers. Listen, he said, I had another dream, and this time the sun and moon and eleven stars were bowing down to me. Welcome to Understanding Your Dreams, presented by Pastor Peter Kansembe from Praise Christian Center. This program has been tailor-made so that you can determine how much attention to pay the meaning of your dreams. The dream is for the dreamer. Stay tuned. Welcome to Understanding Your Dreams. This is Pastor Peter Kansende from Praise Christian Center. Once again, I bring to you greetings from our Bishop, Dr. Edgar Ngambi. As usual, we start by reading from Job chapter 33 and verse uh, 14. The Bible reads, uh, God, for God may speak in one way or in another, yet man does not perceive it. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men, while slumbering on their beds, then he opens the ears of men and seals their instruction, in order to turn man from his deeds, and to conceal pride from man, and to keep back his soul from the pit, and his life from perishing by the word. So as usual, we start by looking at this verse that gives us the reason why God uh, speaks to us through dreams. And the scripture says that God speaks to us through dreams in order to keep us or to keep a man from destruction. Now a dream or a vision is ideal because man is resigned from the activities of the day. And once man is resigned from the activities of the day, it means God has full access to that man and distracted and interrupted and so when um, man is disengaged from all the activities then the bible says that god opens the ears of man and he seals um, an instruction now to seal an instruction means to lay a platform a platform for that uh, instruction that god is uh, going to give to be accepted and all this god does because he loves man and it's in order that he may keep his soul from perishing by the sword. So now, as we started looking in the scriptures in the last program, we want to continue. We started by looking at dreams from the soul, and we were looking at dreams from the soul and also uh, evil dreams. So we are looking at that context of dreams. And so this evening, we want to continue from there and build up and just see what the word evening we want to continue from there and build up and just see what the word of god says so now if if you consider one of the things that uh, is usually asked is why do i talk about dreams now there are people who feel that there is not sufficient information about dreams in the bible or they are not discussed in the bible at all but then when you look at the word of God, you find that uh, there are so many dreams uh, and visions. And uh, some dreams are called night visions. So you see also the first dream uh, or vision is in um, Genesis 15. And then also you see that the first dream uh, clearly is um, the one that Abimelech uh, had. So now if you look at the scriptures and we, we go to Numbers chapter 12 and verse 6, want to establish something there to encourage you in case you have same questions as are usually asked and this is when miriam has an issue with moses and they have been complaining and then god summons them to a to a hearing at the door and so then in verse 6 the bible says and he says to them numbers 12 hear my words if there is a prophet among you i the lord make myself known to him in a vision I speak to him in a dream. Not so with my servant Moses. He is faithful in all my house. I speak to him face to face, plainly and not in dark saying, and he sees the form of the Lord. Why then are you not afraid to speak of Moses, my servant? So here God makes it clear. He says, if a prophet is among you, I make myself known to him in a vision and in a dream. So these two things, visions and dreams, they are similar. 
and God has chosen them as a particular medium of communication. Now, if God has chosen uh, the way that he wants to speak to people, um, we cannot question him. We cannot question his maker because I believe that sometimes we want to give God rules of how he should speak to us and how he should not speak to us. Now, when you look at that verse, it also, after he says that, uh, you're not afraid uh, of Moses, I do not speak to him in dark sayings. Dark sayings are like parables or hidden uh, uh, stories with hidden meanings. Uh, and so a dream is also like a parable. And so you see Jesus was using parables to speak to the people. The, the meaning was hidden, but eventually he would explain the meaning of the parable. So here God clearly says he speaks in a vision, in a dream. But to Moses, he doesn't speak in parables. He speaks clearly. So the, the, the dream may also come as a parable. And that's why sometimes people will say, I'm seeing a car. Uh, it's getting lost or it's moving out of the way. And when you look at it, it's like a parable that you can't understand. The car has no driver. It's, it's out of control. But most of the time, God may be speaking about you as that car that seems to be out of control. Maybe things in your life are not in order. But to Moses, he says, I speak to him clearly. So now we see that God has chosen a way that he wants to speak. Let's confirm that in the scriptures. Let's see if there's another scripture that tells us that God speaks to us um, in a dream or can speak to, to us in dreams. So here we go now to First Samuel chapter 28 and uh, verse 6. First Samuel 28 and verse 6. This is uh, the time that uh, Saul was seeking the Lord, but the Lord had stopped answering him. So let's see what the Bible says in verse uh, 6, Samuel 28, First Samuel. When Saul inquired of the Lord, he refused to answer him, either by dreams or urine. So here clearly it says Saul was seeking the Lord, and in seeking the Lord, he was confident that God was going to answer by a dream or by the urine. But it is saying that God refused to answer him either by uh, dreams or by urine. So like Job says, God may speak in a dream. So again, we see that God has chosen that particular way in which he may speak to you or he may address issues. Let's go to another verse in uh, Genesis chapter 20. And let's look at this interesting story just to see that there are other scriptures that confirm that God may choose or has chosen as one of the ways of speaking to us. It is in a dream. In uh, Genesis chapter 20, verse 3, uh, this is the story of Ab Abraham and Abimelech. Uh, Abraham told Abimelech that the wife Sarah was his sister. And so the man confidently married uh, Abraham's wife and paid Lovola for, for the man's wife. And now God comes to him by night and he says to him, But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said, So again we see that God came in the, in the night by a dream and said, So he spoke, so God may speak to you in a dream. So God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said, Behold, you are a dead man. Because the woman who you have taken is um, as your own, is not your own, for she is a man's wife. Then God said to him in the dream, yes, I know you did this in integrity of your heart, for it, it was I who kept you back and spared you from sinning against me. And therefore, uh, I did not give you uh, the occasion to touch her. And he came in a dream. Okay, so now we see that Abimelech is rebuked by the Lord in a dream. And Abimelech is telling the Lord that, but this man said this woman is a sister and I, uh, I, I got her in the integrity of my heart. So he is having a conversation with the Lord. So we see again clearly God spoke to um, Abimelech in a dream. So now we have seen uh, in, in those uh, three passages, just to agree, with the, the, the passage that we normally read on the program, John, uh, Job chapter 33 and verse 14. So we want to build up again and see what Joel has to say. In Joel chapter 2 and verse 28, this is a, a very common scripture that we normally like to quote. Joel chapter 2 and verse 28, the Bible says, Afterwards, 
and afterward I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. So again here, the Lord is addressing his communication channel. He says, your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and then the sons and daughters who shall prophesy shall also see dreams and visions. I mean, shall see visions. The old men shall see dreams. Now, again, God puts visions and dreams together as his channel of communication. And now, one of the things that I would like us to appreciate uh, is that in the old covenant, the spirit would come maybe upon one man, he would have a dream. But we see that even non-believers, like the, 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 the king of Babylon, had a dream. We see the, the pharaoh in Egypt had a dream. So God can reach anyone. Uh, with a dream but because joel is linking the outpouring of the spirit of god to prophesying and to dreams and to visions it means that if dreams were rare and came upon uh, prophets or those would be a few prophets in the land now that the spirit is poured upon the church it also means that one of the activities that we expect is that the holy spirit will give dreams to anyone in the church who uh, as the spirit of god the spirit of god will speak to anyone he can uh, activate dreams so in Joel chapter 2 and verse 28 is the voice of god activated by the outpouring of the spirit and so we see that the expression of the holy spirit will also come into the church as in romans the bible tells us as many as are led by the spirit of god are sons of god so God leading can be the way he led Abimelech. He comes to him in the night, rebukes him, have a conversation, and Abimelech uh, returns the wife of Abraham. He was led by the Spirit of God. So we have all these examples that have gone before us in order that we may be confident that God has spoken to so many people in, in the dreams that he can also speak to us. Now, in the next program, we are going to explore this further. But today we will leave it here and move on to our discussion because we are looking at so dreams which we were building up last week and dreams that come from the evil one. So now first we establish uh, the fact that God can speak in a dream and whether you like it or not, he can choose to speak to you. Whether you have inquired or not, he is the almighty, he is um, the sovereign Lord. So now if you look at Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 3, there the Bible says, A dream may come as a result of the business of the day or the painful efforts of the day. So now in this passage, it links dreaming to activities of life, meaning that um, uh, for a dream comes with much business and painful effort. So there are things that you've been running around with. Maybe you are doing assignments for school or maybe you are hoping to sell something, or maybe you are hoping to get engaged, somebody promised you, and you are really laboring at that thing. And when you sleep, you can begin to see those things. So that's what that scripture says. Now here, as we see the scripture, it begins to differentiate because we have said there are four sources of dreams. Dreams can come from God, dreams can, can come from the soul, can come from the enemy and from the environment. But here we are looking at the soul and the environment. So a dream that comes as a result of the major activities of your day, they are coming because your mind is still resting, your mind is still thinking things. Your body may be tired, your body may be asleep, but your spirit is still awake. And so those may come. And then he says, from the painful effort, and these are times that a person may labor, work very hard, and maybe out of those things they have worked so hard, maybe they have a loss, and their spirit is still complaining, and sometimes we are blaming somebody, and these are the common ones. A person has a dream, something went wrong, and they are blaming somebody. So you will see that you are fault finding in a dream. So it can be activated by the things that are really uh, running uh, through your mind. For example, I've received a lot of um, dreams from people after this election. A lot of people have been saying they are dreaming, they are with the president, they are dreaming, they are talking with the president, they are dreaming, they are receiving something from the president. And all these dreams, they are being uh, activated, or let me say most, I'm not, let me not say all, from uh, different levels of excitement that people have, different expectations. And so some of them trigger from that activity. 
So um, you would like to uh, look at Ecclesiastes 5 verse 3. And then let's look at Songs of Solomon chapter 3 so that we look at soul dreams. Here we are looking at soul dreams and then we we'll migrate to uh, evil dreams. In Solomon's chapter, Song of Solomon chapter 3 and verse 1, it says, In the night I dreamt that I sought the one whom I love. She said, I looked for him, but I could not find him. So this is a common dream for those who are dating, for those who are in love, or for those who are expecting that somebody will bring Lovola or somebody is about to propose. They've been going to the movies, they've been taking walks, and their heart is feeling excited. And this woman says, in the, in the night I had a dream that I sought the one whom I love. And sometimes when people are having this excitement, they easily conclude that uh, maybe this woman will accept my proposal or maybe this man is about to do this. There is excitement. And so when you have such dreams, it is good to sit down and reflect and begin to dissect so that you are sure that what you are seeing uh, is from God. Because of course, the Lord spoke to Joseph, we'll consider it in the next uh, session. But for tonight, let us con consider so dreams. So in Song of Songs, chapter five, verse two, again, it says, I went to sleep, but my heart stayed awake. I dreamt that I heard the voice of my beloved as he knocked at the door of my mother's cottage. Open to me, my sister, my love, my dove, my spotless one, for I am wet with heavy night dew, for my hair is covered with it. Again, this lover has a dream. They have stayed awake, and in their awakeness, they start dreaming about the person they really love, and they dream that the person is knocking at the door. When you wake up, you find that you are alone in the house, and there was nobody. Why? Because the heart is excited. The heart is expectant. The heart is beginning to imagine things. And so when you are exactly in that place of excitement with things that are going around, sometimes it's good to take a step back and just reflect and ask, is this dream from God? Is it from my soul, from my expectation, from the fact that maybe you have fallen in love with somebody? Uh, so you are having those uh, activations. A dream can come from the soul. And so we see that this person says, I was asleep, but my heart was awake. So this excitement is not just about relationships. People can be excited about contracts. They can be excited about job offers. They go for interviews. They are happy. They are asleep. Their heart is awake and they are just dreaming. They are being promoted. They are being given a big Pajero or a VX or the latest car in town. Why? Because the heart is expectant. The mind is thinking. And so you may have uh, such a dream. So some, some of these are dreams that we uh, can say that they are dreams that come out of a need or a dream that can come uh, out of uh, a fantasy. Let us look at Isaiah chapter 29 and uh, verse 8. We also look at dreams that come out of the soul or the need or the desire that is in a person. Isaiah 29 and verse 8. There the Bible says, It shall be as when a hungry man dreams that he is eating, but he awakens with his craving not satisfied, or as when a thirsty man dreams that he is drinking, but he awakens and he is faint, and his soul thirst not quenched. So now here again the prophet gives an example. It's not every dream that a person dreams they are eating that is demonic, or witches have come, or wizards have come. There are people who sleep at lunch hour. And they are imagining how precious the meal will be. They are imagining how that chicken has been prepared. And all of a sudden, they start dreaming that meal is being uh, saved. If you are a farmer and if you have uh, slept during the day in the harvest or in the farming season, you would testify to this dream that most of the time when a hungry laborer sleeps, they will obviously dream a, a very big plate of Mishima is being saved to them or whatever food they like. It may not be demonic, but it may be coming from the craving and from the desire that is in a person's heart. And so some of the dreams, this is also like when a person has financial challenges. Uh, when a person has a financial challenge, we can compare it to being hungry. So usually people will say, I'm dreaming, I'm receiving a very big basket full of money. I'm receiving, I'm, uh, I'm dreaming, I'm receiving uh, a briefcase full of money. I am dreaming somebody is giving me money in dollars. And sometimes when you sit back and reflect, it is similar to this one, which is saying when a man is hungry, 
they start dreaming they are being saved with water or food some of those are pointing to the need that is current and the desire of that need um, to be uh, fulfilled other people for example may have a lot of money and they are not keeping it properly so again you might start dreaming your money is being stolen not because the devourer has come or not because uh, a wish has come to steal your money but because there is uncertainty in your soul about the way you have kept that money so again you find that they are dreaming things thieves are coming and this is common for those who buy new cars you buy a new car for the first time you've never had a car it's outside your home you keep checking every five minutes you stay awake the whole night every moment you sleep you see thieves it's not because thieves have come it's just because you have bought this precious car and it's outside and you seem to be guarding it even when your body is asleep so sometimes a dream can come like that as it says uh, in isaiah and then there are also dreams that come from defiled places and this one I, I, we just want to look at it because normally i just say there are demonic dreams dreams from the devil but we don't go in detail so today let's just take a dive and see what they will look like jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 5 25 jeremiah 23 and 25 the Bible reads, I have heard what the prophets have said, who prophesy lies in my name, saying I have a dream and I have uh, dreamt. So now most of the people like to quote from Jeremiah about the false prophets and they make it the authority in the church that nobody should talk about dreams because God talked about false prophets. Uh, it's like nobody should talk about money because God talks about thieves in Malachi. So because he has talked about thieves in Malachi, then that is the standard. Everybody is a thief. So this is uh, what uh, most people like to refer to. So now we have seen according to this passage that a dream that comes from lies will be from the enemy because God does not lie. In verse 27 it says, Who think they can cause my people to forget my name by their dreams which every man tells his neighbor. So here they have lying dreams and the lying dreams are meant to make the people forget God. So if a person comes to you with a dream that is leading you in sin or leading you away from God, that dream is from the enemy. That dream is from the father of lies. Uh, in verse 28, it says, The prophet who has a dream, let him tell his dream. But he who has my word, let him speak my word. So here God differentiates because there is a person who can have a dream that is from his own spirit. And another person can have a dream that is full of the word of God. And so God says, if it is your own dream, tell it your dream and don't say it's from me. But if you have my word, speak my word and let that word um, come from me. In Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 32, it says, Behold, I am against those who prophesy lying dreams. And he begins to give the character of this lying dream. Says the Lord, tell them who cause my people to error, to go astray with their lies by their boasting, by their uh, divination. So now you see in verse 29, it links divination and sorcerers to lying dreams. And this is where those who love to go to witch doctors and prophetas, the prophetas sleeps or the witch doctor sleeps and they divine and they enchant and they come and give you a dream from the realm of hell and you believe. Now, those are the dreams that we talk about from the devil. So if God has said sorcerers can have dreams, diviners can have dreams this is where we say a dream can come from the demonic uh, place or from the place of the pit of hell and so you need to pay attention uh, especially those who want to receive every other dream when somebody says i had a dream about you it's good also to know who had the dream do they fear god do they walk in the counsel of god or is just somebody you have met across the street i had a dream and you receive it happily maybe it's divination if you receive it will come to you it will happen so a dream that comes from the enemy will speak lies will speak destruction it comes to deceive and then finally it also comes to contradict the will of god so god was telling them go in babylon because i'm sending you into punishment but the false prophets were saying god will come you you will not go into babylon god will deliver you so they were contradicting the will of god so God may speak to you, he may give a strong impression upon your life, and then somebody delivers a contradictory uh, uh, dream, then you may know this might not be from God, so you need to watch over it. Now to just wind up with this one, uh, I would like to leave with you Acts chapter 16 
and verse 16 to 18. Paul was preaching in a place and he met this slave girl who had the spirit of divination and she started saying, these are men of God, they are from God. And she said all sorts of things. But Paul rebuked that demon and it left uh, that girl. So there are dreams that can come from the pit of, of hell to come and destroy a person's life. So until the next time, this is Peter Kansembe from Praise Christian Center. Shalom, shalom. You may like my page on Facebook, Peter Kansembe Understanding Dreams. Or you may send in your questions by WhatsApp to 0961 0961-500-512. Until the next time, shalom. You have been listening.